Scotty and Pollock with the ace. It was the Dutchies, Mepelink and Kaiser. They'll be followed by Stockman and Larson, who got look the jack. Look at the teams in semifinal B here, round one. We have a slew of Americans. We have Larson Stockman, the reigning queens from Waikiki. We have Dowdy Pollock. And we have, starting on the queen side, in fact, Sarah and Summer. Along with them will be the Canadians, Melissa and Sarah Pavan Umana Paredes, and the European champions, Kaiser and Mepelink from the Netherlands. For those of you just joining us, Alex and April Kleiman Ross won semifinal A. They'll be joined in the finals by Agatha and Duda. Third place finishers were the Americans Reeves and Howard. They got nine points. So we'll keep that in the back of our minds as we are momentarily joined by Jeremy Casebeer, the Lorax, doing double duty today. He's got to play a semifinal later in the day, but kind enough to join us here for semifinal B women's action. Hello, hello, hello everyone. Some tight setting calls early on Sunday here, Jeremy. Nice start here from the American Sarah and Summer. Three points out of the gate. Jeremy, you got your first taste of King of the Court action yesterday. What were your thoughts from a playing standpoint? Oh, I loved it. I mean, there's literally no stops. This first round, you get a little bit of a breather just because there's more teams, so you sit for a few more seconds in between, but it's fast-paced and really high-quality playing. Strategically, I, I ask all my co-commentators this. Did you have a number in this first round that you were trying to get to in order to feel comfortable? Um, not really, because it depends. Was it in the first round yesterday, Herrera and Gavira went for 26, so <laughs> it kind of varies just depending. Sometimes it's pretty spread out, sometimes it's pretty tight, but definitely wanted to be kind of middle of the pack, at least five, six away from last place. But again, in one or two minutes, anything can change. That team in last place can get over and get on a run and go hot. So you didn't have a, a particular number, but you wanted a good five or six points clearance yes. from the team behind you. Yeah, and our first round was a little sketchy, you know. We had some good opportunities, got over to the other side, but it's not easy to convert. Larson and Stockman, Queens from Waikiki, get on the board here. And another nice put away on the left side from Kelly Larson. Sarah's all over that. Nice trans set. Two American teams playing quite well of late. Sarah and Summer, of course, winning the four-star in Moscow just about a month ago, a little over a month ago. Ooh, big bomb on two from Sarah Pavin, the big lefty. That is available. <laughs> Especially when you're 6'5 <laughs> and left-handed, that is available <laughs> at all times. As is that. A way to clean up a, an otherwise tight pass. Kaiser and Mepelink, the Dutch duo, looking for their first opportunity on the queen side. They'll wait a little bit longer. Making it look effortless out there. Nice touch, Kelly Larson. And the put away, Emily Stockman. They've had kind of a breakout year, both on the AVP and on the FIVB tour. Yeah, they're playing really well together. Beat a lot of good teams on the international tour, won their pool a bunch out there, which is always difficult to do. Just the level of competition always getting higher and higher. Uh, you're always looking to advance, but when you're in your pool, that's definitely a confidence boost. Especially they kind of went to this modified pool play thing and in a lot of the tournaments, if you won your pool, you got an entire day off. Oh, that's massive. Which 
sometimes can leave you feeling a little bit disjointed, but as the season gets long, those days off are really nice to have. Absolutely, especially with long travel day, just a day or two before the actual tournament, that helps. Which I'm curious what you think. So in the normal tournament, siding out is, especially on the World Tour, is kind of one of the most important statistics and key. There's also a premium on aces and blocks, point scoring. Do you think that changes at all with this format? What would you say are a couple of the most important categories or statistics? Uh, well, obviously the teams that succeed are the teams that side out the best, right? Nice put away there, Irene Pollock, uh, because that's the only place you're scoring points, right? But uh, it's just, it's interesting to, to kind of, I'm gonna say this word just for your benefit, <laughs> bifurcate uh, it into these separate categories where your point scoring is what allows you the opportunity to score. So it's almost backwards in a sense, right? Exactly. Your point scoring is literally how you score uh -huh. uh, in a regular volleyball match, but you have to be good at both elements, not only to score once you get to the queen side, but you have to be good on block and defense to give yourself those opportunities. Exactly. So I think it, it maintains the integrity of the game. It just sort of highlights the side out element of the game a little bit more, this format. Nice little slap down, Summer Ross. And they have an early lead here, seven points. 14 minutes to go here, round one. It's a 20 minute round, the fifth place team. At the end of that 20 minutes, we'll say goodbye to Huntington Beach. We saw in semifinal A, fortunes can change in a hurry. Alex and April barely survived round one with an amazing dig at the very end to dismiss the Japanese team, and then they went on a mad tear. Nice dig there, Kelly Larson. Uh, it's going to be just wide, however. They are practice partners pretty consistently, both under the tutelage of Scott Davenport. So they know each other well, the Canadians and Larson Stockman. It's put away there from Sarah Pavin. Yeah, storied collegiate career at University of Nebraska, four-time All-American. Don't see a lot of those, and she's also a scholastic genius. Always nice when those go together. Now, you don't see that too frequently, right? Somebody dedicated to not only the volley, but the scholastics as well. Although, wow. even as I say that, I have met some pretty smart volleyball players. Well, I've also met some <laughs> that are not quite that <laughs> <laughs> good serve there from Larson and Stockman gets them to the queen side they sit on two points the reigning European champions trying to get over there for the first time we haven't seen them on the queen side just yet and we will not see them there this time they're looking to get off zero still plenty of time but you start to feel that pressure don't you when you're at the bottom of the table Man, absolutely. Especially this first round, 20 minutes feels so long, and then once it starts creeping under 10 and you're battling towards the bottom, it gets edgy. And you see a team that only has one, so it seems attainable, but every time you fail to get over there, the pressure mounts, uh, and then if you get over there and you get dismissed quickly, that's a that pressure just keeps mounting and keeps mounting, right? It's really a, kind of an interesting psychological experiment, this format. Absolutely. It seems like if you get that first one or two on the king or queen side, it really starts to go get easier. We struggled in our first round yesterday, missed a few good opportunities, and then finally found some rhythm. Oof. And there it is. The Dutchies will get to the queen side. Smattering of applause from the crowd. <laughs> Chance to get off zero. Nice little knuckle pokey from Sonic Kaiser. 
an actual police detective in Holland. Really? Yeah. I mean, she's a full-time beach volleyball player right now. Detective, as in investigation. As in investigation. Wow. As in, don't try and pull a fast one on her. <laughs> oh, nice try there from Mepelink, but well done, Sarah Pavin, to clean that up. The Dutchies do get two points, however, on the queen side, so they're out of the basement. Nice cover, Mel Humana Paredes. A nice little wow. shoot set. Oh, beautiful transplay there. Yeah. Really spreading the court, making it hard on the Larson to get over. Melissa, the FIVB best setter of the year, 2018. You can see an example of her great hands in that play there. It's nice if you're 6'5 and left-handed already, but then if you have the best setter on your team as well, that's really nice. It's child's play after that. <laughs> yeah. Kaiser with the dig, but it goes over, and Dowdy whacks that one long. The European champions with another chance on the queen side. A little tight. Mepelink with the lefty. Ooh. Nice high swing there, Sonic Kaiser off the top of Summer Ross. And they're at four. Starting to breathe a little bit easier now are the Dutch. Sometimes it just takes a little while to get on a roll, especially early on a Sunday morning. Been a little bit of a whirlwind time zone wise, especially for the Europeans. Uh, we were over in Europe for the first two King of the Court events. Then we flew all the way to Hawaii, which is a nice 12 hour time <laughs> difference from Europe. Easy change. And then it's three hours difference, obviously, from Hawaii to the West Coast here. Kaiser's on that one. Little tempo wow. set and a cut shot. Yeah, I really. That's efficient. The Dutchies, all of them, and their whole program are all such good hand setters. It really allows for offensive variety in their game. And especially in trans, lots of great hand setters sometimes default to bumps and trans, but they have no fear to pull them out. Nice high line wow. shot there. Not easy over to the go big Sarah Pavin. Over. So I was wondering this yesterday as we were playing, how do you think tendencies compared to a normal match are involved in this game? So obviously you're rotating through with five teams. Can you just repeat the same thing over and over? Banging angle, banging angle, banging angle? Or do you think you need to have a little more variety like you would in a normal match? Are you talking about when your team is siding yes. out? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I, I posed that question to one of my other co-commentators and, and uh, their thought was that you, you approach side out like you always would. I mean, you're not going into a side out situation thinking about the defensive tendencies necessarily of the other team, right? You're yeah. trying to have vision, trying to react to whatever you see out there, right? And I would think that that applies, especially as teams are, are churning through on the other side, right? You're just going up there and trying to take what they're giving you, essentially. Yeah. Now, defensively, it may be a little bit different. You may be trying to apply a defensive tactic that you and your partner are most comfortable with because it's hard to strategize for four teams simultaneously, right? Exactly. Oh, nice Ooh. attempt there from Irene, but ultimately unable to come up with it. An impressive show of flexibility. <laughs> Possible foot fault there, but allowed to go. It's been a few. I like that they're letting them play. A swing there as we take another look at it from Kelly Larson. Nice dig, Kelly Larson. Summer on two with the cut shot. They'll take the queen side. 
So we have Hughes and Summer at 11 points. Pavin Mel HP, as I like to abbreviate it, at eight. Larsa Stockman with seven, Kaiser Meppelink six, and Dowdy Pollock still on one. Getting a little bit critical for them as we approach the five minute mark here in round one of semifinal B. Kaiser's all over that, runs the back set and the slap down the line. They'll take the queen side. She <laughs> forgot what form of the game we were playing there for a second, went back to play defense. That's something I haven't seen as much, players running back. And it was pretty swirly yesterday, so it seemed like there's opportunities, but maybe it's just a little extra work, especially if you're on a roll. Yeah, and it kind of goes to your earlier question a little bit, right? Like you sort of, when you settle into a match against one opponent, you start to work in those little wrinkles, right? It's a little right? game of cat and mouse. You want to right. keep them on their toes, move it around a little, but. But when it's a fresh opponent every time, you sort of revert to what uh, commonly works for you, right? Or your, your sort of base posture. Minimum necessary force. To put it in physics terms. <laughs> Ooh. Nice dig there. So. Great dig for Sarah Hughes, but ultimately right into the jaws of big Sarah Pavin. Nice network there from Kelly Larson. Larson and Stockman level on seven with the Duchess. Ooh, that one just wide. We saw some incredible serving from Meppelink yesterday, just pasting sidelines. That one long as well from Pollock. They're gonna need to make a move in this next serve if they want a chance. Nice shot over the top there, Kelly Larson. Yeah, it starts to get critical, right? Because when you're sitting on one, as you mentioned, Kaiser and Meppelink, six clear of Dowdy and Pollock. So not only do you have to get to the queen side, but then you've got to put together a streak that you've yet been unable to put together. Oh, oh boy. goodness. So casual. Casually <laughs> Rosie-esque line feast from Kelly Larson. <laughs> The other thing that's interesting is there's so little time between plays, you just move on to the next, even yeah. after an incredible play, which you would normally <laughs> celebrate. You don't get to argue yeah. with the ref, but you also don't get to chest thump your <laughs> feasts down the line. I tried arguing with the ref yesterday. It didn't really work. Move you get, along. Move along. You get 1.2 seconds to plead your case, and then they ignore you anyways, right? For better or for worse. Yeah, that is one of the things that the promoters like about this, though, is there's not a lot of stalling, yes, exactly. wiping down glasses, fixing divots in the sand, although... That's my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> but that's an interesting one, right? Because it does get, especially with so many teams waving through and so much activity, that sand gets choppy out there. Oh, yeah. So you can kind of step in some divots and all that kind of stuff. As we approach the two-minute mark here, keep in mind that three successive serves in the last two minutes will equal a point for the team on the king's side. New rule going into effect today. The final 30 seconds, every missed serve is a point. I like that. Yeah. It created a very interesting situation in the first round of semifinal A on the women's side. The Japanese team was at five. Alex and April were at five. The Dutch team was at five. Alex and April were serving to the Japanese team as time ran out. But April had to serve, uh -huh. and a miss would have cost them a spot in the second round. As it was, April made her serve, came up with an amazing left-handed scoop and put away to dismiss the Japanese team and move them on. And they ultimately won that semifinal. Hey, uh, that's a stinger for the Japanese. It really surprised is. Surprised by April. Nice put away from Dowdy. They are in dire need of some points here. I don't know that even if they side out every time, they've got time to overcome an eight-point deficit. Yeah, it's going to be tough. 
especially with long rallies. <laughs> you want things to be terminal when you're on the clock. Nice little cut shot there from Irene. Keep in mind now that it's 30 seconds, so that's a free point right there. Oh, that they technically a earlier they could have had it. Okay, the scorekeepers and Mark not in <laughs> total agreement. Okay, again, they're not going to have time with teams going to take their full eight seconds. It's unfortunate that they found their groove just a little uh, late here. Another 30 seconds, they could have done it. So they get to six, but it's kind of a moot point as that will be the lowest score and we will say goodbye to Amanda and Irene. But a nice little showing at the end, fighting all the way through to the finish line, which is admirable. Advancing on top will be Hughes and Summer. And then I had yet to commit that scoreboard to memory before they before it went away. <laughs> but Hughes and Summer, Pavin and Umana Paredes. Larson Stockman and Kaiser Mepelink will advance to round two. Semifinal B here. We're in Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA. King of the Court Crown Series. This is the final stop of four in the series. My name is Rich Lamborn, joined by Jeremy Casebeer, who is mentally preparing for his semifinal appearance later in the afternoon. Who are you gunning for in your group? No, I'm just looking forward to getting to compete against the international teams. It's well, we got Harley down on the sand. We're going to get some quick words with Amanda and Irene. Harley. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm here with uh, these two guys. They, they had a good job today. And now I just have to ask them, just what do you think about the this game right now? The, the, your, your last minute was good. And what do you think about before? Yeah, I think we just kind of had to hone into um, ourselves and remember to play our game. Um, but, I mean, we're out here with some of the best in the world, and that's what, what we want to be challenged at every single week. So it's amazing. I didn't hear the question. The music's really loud. Um, uh, okay, the, just talking about the what, what I think the king of the court. Your experience here in the King of the Kirk. Okay. Well, our overall experience, it was awesome. This was a really fun event to play in. Um, it was really fun to play in the semis today with some of the best teams out there. And unfortunately, we got started a little too late. Um, but it was a great, great experience. We're happy to be here. Nice. Congrats for your job here. And uh, uh, good luck for next time. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So that was a great look at some highlights from round one there. Uh, earlier today, we had an interview with the Japanese team when they were out after the first round in semifinal A. And that was, until now, my favorite interview I've ever heard. <laughs> but that interview with Irene and Amanda and Harley was maybe the best thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, awesome. And... On top of that, I'm jealous of that King of the Court t-shirt he's got, the thing. Is there any more stylish? Yours, man. Where did I get this child's medium? <laughs> yeah. Is that special any, ordered? At any baby gap in the... shrunk? <laughs> Orange County area, yeah. 
Uh, is there anyone more stylish than Harley? No. I mean, that guy <laughs> is something else. Not only a legend on the court, but a legend off the court. Happy to have him as part of our broadcast team as we get ready for round two, semifinal B, ladies action. We got a couple American teams. Sarah and Summer are gonna take the queen side to start yet again. We got Mel and Sarah from Canada. We have Kelly and Emily also from the United States and Madeline and Sana. Beppelin Kaiser from the Netherlands. In five, four, three, two, one. USA versus USA to start. Looks like Canada to follow and the Dutch will serve last in this Oof. Second round. Great put away from Summer. Yeah, that was tough. A couple meters off the net there. Does a nice job keeping that ball in front of her. The better set. A nice turn there wow. from the big Sarah Pavin and the big bomb. What a great set from Mel. That is an insanely difficult play, especially when you're 6'5. Turning and scooping, converting. Nice little shot there over the top. Mel HP. Get the Canadians on the board. The other interesting thing is seeing every team's strategy. So it seemed like yesterday we we were serving one guy and then the other teams were serving the other. Each team has a little different feel for which side out player they want to go at. How much are you paying attention to what other teams are doing? Or are you just kind of thinking of your own particular strategy against the team? Mainly my own strategy, but when a team that just got over with the fewest starts going on a roll, I'm like, why are you serving the left sider? Let's go right. with the right sider, you know? Well, that one just wide. No touch on the block. And so Kaiser Mepelink will leave the queen side with no points as of yet. Wow. Nice little slap down. Good shovel set there by Sarah Hughes up to her partner at the net. Big bomb from Summer up the middle. She's got a really difficult to read arm swing, I think. She comes in so smooth, it almost looks like everything's going to be a shot, but she contacts high and can unload at will. A nice swing there from Summer Ross. And here's one of those moments, right? They keep, everybody keeps trying Summer. She sighted yeah, out a few times. That's, that's what that, it's frustrating when you're hoping for the team with the lowest points to go off. Just caught the line that time. There we go. Oof. Nice shot up and over. They are getting rhythm. Looks like it's almost the same wind as yesterday. Slightly swirly because you're in the stadium, but the left side, summer side right now, slightly bad side. That was a great turn and get from Emily Stockman, and she gets another chance in transition here. Oh. Big bomb cross oh. court. Great show of defensive prowess there. That's a look at that one right there, the turn and go with the left hand, amazing. Nice shot, Kelly Larson up and over the top for their first points here in round number two. Just a 16 minute round, four teams remaining. Lowest of the four will be done. And the nice serve from Summer for the ace. And responding in kind, Mel Umana Paredes. Such a good feeling getting aces and just walking straight over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saves energy, three points, shot at the king side, queen side in this case. Big swing wow. angle from Mel. 
the Smiling Assassin, she informed me her <laughs> nickname was yesterday. Is that self-proclaimed or? She said that uh, Danger, the dangerous one, Dane Blanton gave her that nickname. <laughs> it's appropriate, I think. And she certainly she has goes. the smiling part locked yeah. down. I'm not so sure what the assassin part is, but she can be lethal offensively. Nice look at that block. Kelly Larson really becoming more and more of an imposing force at the wow. net. Wow. What a dig by Summer. Oh, yeah. Nice little slip for the put away. She's so good on pulling. Such great hands. Those are not easy plays to make. Yeah, I think Summer's one of the best at those little touch yeah. plays. I think she does a lot of that just. I don't know, almost for fun. She does. Just dinking <laughs> really around does. the house or. And she plays a, she plays literally like all day, every day. There's been d days right after the tournament Monday. She's like, one time she hit me up to play a little co-ed two man right after a long tournament. I was like, I need a rest day. She's just <laughs> looking to get out there and play. Volleyball junkie we would exactly. consider her, right? Which if you're gonna be a junkie, volleyball is <laughs> one of the better ways to go. Right. Red dig, Madeline. That's going to be a tough set. That ball is off. The antenna just nicks the antenna. Tried to shovel that one in a little bit too quickly, and Sana Kaiser not too pleased with herself there. She throws some sand. Are there times when you get upset with yourself and you wish you were wearing a shirt that you could tear off? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> Getting to play on FIVB in, in Brazil, you always wear jerseys, and sometimes it is somewhat satisfying to just tear it a little bit instead of punting the ball out, out of the stadium, just get a little of that frustration <laughs> out. Do you think it's a disservice to the fans that you're required to wear a shirt on the <laughs> FIVB so that we can't see your abs? Easy. <laughs> Speaking of which, when am I going to get on your workout scheme? I've been hitting you, I've been asking you all summer. There is a good chance that we're going to get one going Tuesday with the Lion King. He's ready for some more. I'm in. Nice block again from Kelly Larson. She's doing a nice job of being disciplined up at the net on that tight ball. Another chance for the Dutch. Oh, look at that set in transition. Wow. I mean, a high spinny dig and... Madeline just goes up there with all the confidence in the world and lays up a gem. This is a beautiful volleyball to watch right now. All teams, most teams hand setting, running some offense and tempo, getting away from just the up and down, trying to challenge the blocker, make the move. Wow. Nice swing there from Madeline. That's an important one. So they get level with Larson and Stockman at two. Get to the halfway point in this second round, semifinal B. This is kind of how their first round went a little bit, right? They started off slowly. It took them a little while to get their first point. But then they got on a little bit of a run and finished strongly in the first round. They're looking to do the same here and get to that third round where keep in mind that nine is the score to beat for the third place team. The top two, of course, are going to advance automatically to the final. Kelly Reeves and Brittany Howard finished in third place of semifinal A with nine points. Nice little knuckle pokey angle, Sonic Kaiser. She detects the defender running to the line, Jeremy. <laughs> She's a detective. That was a oh, hacky joke. Hey, All right. Hey. <laughs> Terrible joke when you have to explain <laughs> that it was a joke. <laughs> I was too focused on the volley. Yeah. Nice set there. Wow. Oh, but Mel's all over it. And the left-handed oh, soft <laughs> spinning put away from Sarah Pavin. She almost to do that. sheepishly <laughs> celebrating that one. Oh, 
Oh, big block again. Kelly Larson seems to have Sarah Pava's number here in this second round, at least the last few times. They need to put some points on the board, though. Oh, good left-handed touch, but unable to get it all the way up was Sarah Hughes. Three now for Larson and Stockman. They're still at the bottom of the table. After that nice run from the Dutchies the last time they were on the King Queen side. Again, walking into that high line, nice conversion. I love how they push that tempo and transition because it doesn't give the defense an opportunity to get set. And Kaiser just shows a ton of range. It's like a little no jump shot there. <laughs> Oh, big wow. block, Apple Lincoln transition. That's got to feel good. That does feel good. That's a point and a queen side saving play from Apple Link. Sweet set. You can see how dangerous they are when they get rolling, and this is exactly the kind of play that took them to the European Championships in their home country of the Netherlands. Wow. Aside from winning the Olympics, if your home country is the host, I can't imagine there's too many better feelings than winning a European championship That's at cool. home. If you're the Dutch. It served just long. Larson and Stockman still trailing. Hughes and Summer. This is getting tight. It's to them, yeah, we've got just five minutes. Wow. wow, what a serve there. That's what we saw from her all day yesterday. Those BBs down the sidelines. Yeah, speaking of which, <laughs> nice response from Mel HP. Seems like all the teams are starting to get a little more aggressive in their serve. You're not. With only four teams in, you're not seeing out quite as long, so the penalty for missing isn't quite there. A little bit better risk-reward profile. And it's interesting how, I don't know, we talk a lot about what number are you trying to get to to be comfortable, but it's really hard to tell because with four minutes remaining in a 16-minute round, the top score is 10 right now. Yeah. And you saw Alex in April over 20 in the second round, which is unlikely in this group. This is much more tightly packed. Ah. Short serve, and Kelly will... Ooh, oh, unlucky. Oh, what a spear. Stabby! What a play. Emily Stockman showing all kinds of left-hand prowess. <laughs> Nice attempt there from Mepelenk, but I'm unable to come up with it. Nice shot there, Kelly Larson. And they're now level with Hughes and Summer at six. Both teams just two points shy of the Dutchies. And the Canadians out front with 11 points. Wow. That was a little impatient, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> tricky, tricky, tricky. Right that that's what we would call impatient if Mel and Sarah ran it down, but it's crafty and Yeah, when it goes down, brilliant it's crafty. Down. <laughs> All right, so the Netherlands now being closely trailed by both American teams. They'll be looking to extend here. Big swing in the angle from Madeline Mepelink. She talked to us yesterday about how she didn't like playing in hats or visors because it obscured her vision. But she just goes with the headband. That's the knuckle poke jumbo. I feel like knuckle poke gets a bad rap. Yeah. I feel like it's a pretty efficient tool in the, to throw out. Especially if you've got some range with it. Yeah. You're somebody who can only go straight with the knuckle poke. It's not so great. Yeah. You go a little cutty, high line, jumbo. 
Taylor Crab's got a wide variety of shots with his knuckle pokey. Jake likes it as well, his little 180. So Kaiser Meppling now take the lead here with a minute 30 left to go here in round two. And kind of like we discussed, this is what we saw out of them in the first round. Oh gosh. <laughs> Getting edgy for the Americans. Let's see here. Using Summer in the most danger as they're at the bottom of the table. So they'll only have one, maybe two more chances to get to the queen side. Oh. oh. Caught a lot of sand there. Yeah. <laughs> Emily trying to dig an enormous hole. <laughs> That, that might be uh -huh. it. They're, they're going to get one more shot, maybe. But they're going to need to get over there. Okay, so that doesn't count just yet as a point. Sarah and Summer don't want Kelly and Emily to get over, which is exactly what happens. So they need this one right here. So this miss serve will count if it is a miss. Oh! A great serve. <laughs> well, you got to go on two there and try and save some time. Wow, that's a big dig. Yeah, you don't want. Oh. You don't want a 30. Whoa. Oh, there's a good oh. smart play. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Now we basically we're going to end up with the tiebreaker, I think here. Don't jinx it, Rich. Wow. Oh, that's But time runs out. All right. Though. So who got to seven first? Larson and Stockman did. But it, the first tiebreaker is longest who had the correct. longest stay. So we'll wait and see who that was. I like how no one, none of the players ever know who actually has the longest streak. It always goes to the scoreboard because you're yeah. usually just so caught unless up. You had, unless you had, you know, five points and you made them all in a row. Yeah. The other team is eliminated. And with a four-point It's got to be Larson and Stockman, right? I would guess. The from the USA wearing blue. Oh, wow, is wow. In that, the is, next round. that is a stinger. Oh. That is a stinger. That's an interesting. I kind of think the tie break should go the other way. Whoever got there first should hold the tie break, I, I think. It makes a little bit more sense to me, but... Yeah, I can see how that would be. You see arguments on both sides of that. So unfortunately, for Larson and Stockman, yeah, that that uh, we'll say goodbye to them. Well, see you later. But Sarah and Summer doing a nice job to sneak it out there right at the end. Let's go down to Harley and see if we can get some thoughts from Kelly and Emily. Harley? Hello. Kelly? Tell me about the last point. Yes. The last point, is that what you said? Yeah. It's a good rally, good defensive plays. I could have set the last ball a little better. Um, came down the wire, but I thought our defense was good. Our side out just wasn't smooth, so, yeah. What do you think about your, when we start this, like this set, you say? <laughs> yeah. Um, like Kelly said, I think our defense was good all day today. Um, side out was a little rough. We seemed like we couldn't really get in a rhythm, um, so we didn't get to get over there and get multiple points in a row. So. And what do you think uh, about the king of the court? It's awesome. I think we've had a great time. The format's great. Um, the fans love it, so hopefully it's, it keeps going. Yeah, we like it a lot. There's a lot of action. It's just something different to play, which makes it exciting and fun, and I think fun for the fans as well. So we're pumped to be a part of it and hope it continues to grow. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.
nice look at the king of the court signage there. All over Huntington Beach. We're here on the south side of the pier, just south of Main Street in Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA. So we've seen two American women's teams go by the wayside here in semifinal group B. We've still got one remaining, Sarah and Summer, along with the Canadians, Mel and Sarah, and the Dutchies, Sana Kaiser and Madeline Mepelink. That'll make up our third and final round of semifinal B here, women's action. Top two teams automatically into the final later this afternoon at 2 p.m. here in Huntington Beach. The third place team needs better than nine points in order to advance as the Americans Kelly Reeves and Brittany Howard got to nine earlier this morning. Yeah. Nice look at the pier there. It's a beautiful day here. Sunday, still morning, right? Sunday morning here in Huntington Beach. Come on down if you're in the area. There's great action. There's suntans to be had. You want to get here before it gets too windy, right? Had a marine layer this morning. It burned off beautifully. And now we have a light breeze and just perfect volleyball conditions. Couldn't ask for anything more. Rich, I'm curious what your thoughts are on the strategy as the clock starts to wind down. So if you ever watch basketball, obviously the last few minutes, people waste the entire shot clock, try and control possession to keep the point scoring opportunities in their favor. And I've heard from players and fans get kind of upset as the time goes down to either throw a sky ball or intentionally miss serves to use the clock in their favor. What are your thoughts? Certainly your strategy is gonna depend on where you Correct. lie on the scorer board, right? I don't know why it took me so long to get that <laughs> uh, Yeah, if you're ahead, we saw it a little bit in semifinal A, even midway through the round, Alex and April had such a lead that April was throwing up sky balls just to burn yeah. a little bit of time. Hold your uh, position a bit. Yeah, hold your position. You're saving some energy, as we've talked about. Uh, obviously, you're trying to speed things up if you're looking to catch up. We saw Summer and Sarah have to get over to the queen side and catch up in a hurry, yeah. and so they went with some on two plays to get over there, and it actually worked out in their favor. Nice little shot over Whew. the top, Sonic Kaiser. Straight to the back line. So yeah, it's gonna depend on your position on the scoreboard and how much time is left, but you know, I think anytime you can shorten plays, we heard Mel Umania Paredes that we're seeing out there right now talk about how she really liked that element of this format, where over on ones, over on twos were really advantageous, advantageous yeah. yeah. But do you think there's any, I've heard some players kind of get upset for using the clock in their favor. Do you think it's poor sportsmanship or just part of the game? Yeah, that's tough to say because kind of our perspective, our meaning American perspective on sportsmanship, we like the notion of fair play, but it's within the rules, right? And it's smart on a certain level. So I don't think it's poor sportsmanship necessarily. It's not exactly what every fan wants to see, probably. We saw it yesterday where Plavins and Samoylovs just had to miss a serve in order to maintain their position, and so that's what they did. Yeah. It's unfortunate, you know, the Brazilians didn't like that as they were on the kind of receiving end of that strategy. Yeah, and you saw that in Group D yesterday as well. I think uh, Kame and Avery were one behind uh, to move on. Trevor Crab had a serve and missed it by about 100 meters. Right, and that was interesting because they were in no danger, yeah. right, Trevor and Try, and so just I think that was jab. maybe just a little needle from Trevor Crabb, which was 100% uh, in line with his personality, I would say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, wow. all those things that are well within the rules, I think are, are fine to employ. Uh -huh. uh, you know, the, the particular case that we were talking about from Plavins and Samoylovs, with just the intentional misser where he almost just dropped it on his own side. Led to the rule that we implemented today where in the final 30 seconds, those miss serves count as a point. So, you know, those things, we've talked about how, how nice it is that the promoters of this event, Wilco Nyland in particular, uh, are listening to player feedback. They're watching what's happening with the game. They're thinking about what the best experience for the fans. Uh, constantly trying to be. improve. Yeah. So it's a new concept. This is just the fourth tournament. 
And so we've seen several rule changes already. A nice block there from Sarah Pavin. Uh, and so, yeah, they're doing their best to make sure that the playing field is level at all times, and it's fun. Get the incentives right, trying to avoid some collusion. Well, that's certainly a big concern of theirs, too. I, I don't know how much of that is actually going on. We had sort of a unique situation in Hawaii <laughs> where, I mean, not to, not to hammer our guy Mark, but I think him announcing that is really what played into that more so than the, you know, I mean, the players can't be paying attention to what's going on all over the yeah. place. Wow. Yeah, just throw, just throw your girl up there tight. Put her six five. You gotta probably not pull too soon against big Sarah Pavin. At least make her think about it. That one just wide. The Dutchies mm. sitting at the bottom with two points. Take the queen side. This is a full 20 minute round here, unlike yesterday where in group play, round three was just 12 minutes. 20 minutes with three teams is going to get tiring. It's See 20 minutes adjust. or first to 15. So typically with that longer time clock, we're seeing teams finish at 15 before the 20 minute time cap. Wow. Nice pick up there and Ooh. boom. Nice catch from Madeline Mevelink. Turns out that's illegal though in volleyball. <laughs> she did make a football move, however, so it is a legal catch since this is Football Sunday, Jeremy. Standing pokey. Yes. Oh. It's nice to be able to do where you can fully land and still get the ball over the top <laughs> of the block. Over a big blocker in summer. Just missing there. Madeline throwing those darts at sidelines. It's interesting too, in the round of three, sometimes if you lose the king side, you're walking your way back. If the other team misses a serve, you're hustling just to get back there. You're on the again. tempo yeah. is insanely fast. Wow, oh, what a play. What a play from the Dutch. Can they turn it into a chance at the queen walking side? Walking into a high, oh. oh. We talked about that yesterday, you and I, right? That 125% of times that the blocker nets, the ball is dug behind yes. him. <laughs> Which seems impossible, I would love that's to actually see that. <laughs> an accurate stat. I would love to check that. I was also got a somewhat irrational belief that if you get two blocks in one rally as a blocker, you never get the third. You always end up losing the point. Or maybe that's just my personal experience. I that, well, I mean, I would argue that that becomes self-fulfilling prophecy there. So you're saying I've got a problem with positive psychology? <laughs> yeah. Well, once you get that second one, you're telling yourself the third one's not coming, right? Shoot. I've got that buried in my subconscious. <laughs> Just need to get my growth mindset right. We're full of platitudes this morning. It's <laughs> Sunday. This is a volley religion. Welcome to church. Set Ooh. there, Sonic Kaiser. Wow. wow. Oh, Sarah Hughes. Looky, looky. <laughs> pulling out of her back pocket. Yeah, just the right-handed spear. Let's see if we get another look at that one. No, there's eight seconds between points. Hardly time for a replay. I think if I play defense, I would try and go over on one all too often. Maybe that's why Reed doesn't want to get up there. Definitely seems like fatigue starting to be a uh, factor, factor now. Yeah. The team's taking a little more time getting to their side, starting to breathe a little heavier. Two teams on four, the Americans, Summer and Sarah, out front with eight. Keep in mind the top two teams automatically advance to the final later. The third place team needs better than nine in order to advance as Mel and Sarah take the queen side. Yeah, you can see Dutchie's huffing and puffing a little bit there. This is where it gets interesting too, because obviously you want to be in the top two in advance, but you're also trying to conserve some energy for the finals. You don't want to burn yourself out too fast. Yeah, you'll have a couple hours to recover, maybe get a little PB and J. 
whatever your pregame, postgame meal is. Do you have a go-to recovery meal and or shake? Nice block there from Sarah Pavin. Oh, there again, like we talk about, those little bang little bang freebie. touch plays from Sarah, uh, from Summer Ross are impressive. And slapping it over into the corner. All right, getting a little edgy. Yeah, they're, they're way to 15 and both of the other teams are tied at four. Which is good news for Reeves and Howard. Oh, oh, oh my oh, goodness. Oh, oh. Oh. The lefty jumbo middle. So if they finish this run out, the same tie break is in place, correct? Yeah, longest stay versus that was a questionable <laughs> set there. And shot over the top from Sonic Kaiser. And they'll be looking to get out front of the Canadians and off of four. That was an important point for them. Let's see. Yeah, we're getting tired out there. Oh, look out. Nicely handled from Madeline Meppelink. That was interesting. You know, that's something that I think oftentimes gets confused. If somebody hand sets the ball really well, people consider them a good setter. But yeah, and they give them more leeway. Yeah. Which is something I've been working on. I don't get any of that respect. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's going on here? An amazing play Ooh. on the side of the Americans. Sometimes oh! With a great touch. Can't she put it away? Slaps it middle. Oh, oh my goodness, that one's gonna go just <laughs> wide. But that was an important point for them to go up by one. As Summer and Sarah get another chance to finish it out. Yeah, if they can put down three side outs, the Dutchies, oh, hand set from Oof. Sarah Hughes. Just saving it for when she's just, most tired. Why not? Just feeling her oats out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how important are your legs and hand setting, really? <laughs> All right. Oh. All right, that actually that helps is what the Dutch want. Yeah. Right. One more side out here, and we will see the end of the run for the Canadians. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like they are not trying very hard. Yeah, that, that was unusual there. I'm not sure what is Everyone's happening. trying to catch their breath. Maybe a little confused about the strategy where things stand, but they definitely need a point. Yeah. It, I'm going to take a page out of my uh, Dutch sidekicks playbook and maybe a uh, conspiracy theory <laughs> collusion because that, that now allows the Canadians to get out front. Six points. The Dutchies need this one as the Americans are one side out away from closing this out. And that one's going to go just wide. Point number seven for Pavin and Umana Paredes. Not looking good for the Dutchies. Looks like Mel is hoping for an option there, so she didn't have to side out, but easily drops it down the line. Great serve, well handled by Mel. Nice little jumbo into the corner. Yeah, that's crazy. Sarah and Summer had an opportunity to close it out, which would have solidified their position to the finals. Ooh. Well, it would have gotten rid of the Canadians, but now the Canadians oh. solidly. With authority. Yeah, the 50-50 ball when you're 6-5. <laughs> Nobody up. That's where you close. Oof. All right. Are they going to get to 15 first? Probably not. Again, one side out. We'll close this out. And So you're thinking ace here, right? It's tough to say. you got to put up a tough serve. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. That's going to be just long, however. Shoot. Looked like the Dutchies weren't happy about that. Is there a call they were hoping for or just frustration? No, I, I mean, again, it, it looked like there was maybe a little bit of collusion there on the side of the North Americans. I mean, I, I might be reading too much into it, but it appears the Dutch may agree with my take on that. In any event, 
Hughes and Summer win that round. Pavan and uh, Humana Paredes made a nice run at the end to solidify second place in their spot in the finals. And with just five points, the Dutchies will be finished here in Huntington Beach, which means the Americans, Kelly Reeves and Brittany Howard, will advance to the final. So congratulations to them. A little frustration on the part of the Dutch, obviously. A little conversation between the Canadians and the Dutch. I'm not sure what they're discussing exactly, but... Yeah, that. So for those of us who missed, how could they have possibly colluded there? To me, it looked like, especially the way Sarah and Summer were playing, they had an easy opportunity finish it out. to finish it out. While they the kind of let a ball a lead. Yeah, they kind of let a ball fall, which allowed the Canadians to get over, get on didn't the close them out. And yeah, and then the Canadians went on a run, which they had to do. So uh, let's see if we can go down to Harley and get a word from our winners, Sarah and Summer. Harley? First question, are you happy? Yes, we're so happy. Huntington's my home beach, so to be in the finals here means uh, everything to me. Yeah. And what do you think your experience about the King of the Court? Oh, it's been so much fun. We love it. It's definitely a different format, but you're hustling and you're moving every single play, and I think the crowd also really loves it. Thank you. Good luck in the Thank final. You. <laughs> Here on the sand, that concludes women's semifinal action. That was the end of Group B. Sarah and Summer winning that. The Canadians, Pavan Umana Paredes, taking second place, and Kaiser Mepelink in third with just five points.